Good morning, friends, and welcome to Saturday, October 17th. Our scripture reading this morning is 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord our Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and your love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and your faith during all of your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is the evidence of the righteous judgment of God, and it is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire and inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God, and on those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus. These will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. When he comes to, comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day, among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our devotion is in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Beth Richardson. The passage today is from Paul's letter to the Christians, Christian converts in Thessalonica. It is one of one of his earliest missionary journeys, and Paul affirms the people, you became imitators of us and of the Lord, and for in spite of the persecution you received, the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. Well, it's hard for us to imagine the experience of this community, which holds the message of a new faith in a community that has never experienced Christians before. Paul visits for a time living with and teaching and orienting people to the new faith. And then they're left on their own. Holding on to what has been given to them, living as most of us do in a predominantly Christian culture, we have no frame of reference for the experience of these early Christians. And yet we can identify with their experience of having been called to live a life that is Countercultural. As Christ followers, we are called to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. When we follow Jesus, we are called to Christ's mission ministry to the poor, the sick, the prisoners, and the hungry, and to the stranger. We're commanded to welcome the refugee among us, to provide for those who are hungry and homeless to work for justice for the LGBTQ community, members of our communities, to hear and respond to the cries of those who have been assaulted or abused or by persons they had trusted, to break down systems that oppose, oppress, and imprison a greater proportion of black and brown bodies. These Christian values are often in conflict with the more prevailing actions of our societal and political leaders. May we follow in the steps of Christ, who marked and named us that we may show all the Christians in the countries of Macedonia and Greece, in the United States and Canada and all the world, how to live. Let us pray. O oh God of love, guide our steps that we may follow the Christ who claims us. In his name we pray. Amen. Now we'll close with a prayer.
this way. Let me double check. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Be blessed this day as you are called out be a Christ follower. Amen.